is uh, preparing you for learning. Okay. Preparing you for learning. So I just want to hit a couple of bullet points and then I'm going to move into it and you're going to have to catch up. And obviously the longer you're studying here, the more your ship is going to develop because you're, you're going to get more and more of the integral uh, structural dynamics of, of building a system of processes that can support your work. You know, and you're only going to be as good as the support system. And this is in the law of physics. It's in the law of life. It's everywhere. Why would it not be in acting? And so many actors think that way. That, oh, I can just go do it. But if you stop and think about other art forms, in dance, yeah. you can tell pretty quick whether somebody is trained or they're not trained. Mm -hmm. Singing, everybody outside of the non-singer knows you can't sing. Your notes are squeaky, you're too sharp, you're too flat. When you paint, you're going to need brushes and paints and canvases. When you play music, it's math. It's either on or it's off. And even if it's off jazz, there's still jazz that doesn't work. Story. You can write and write and write, that's journaling. You need to know, you have to structure to tell a story. Why would acting be any different? It's not. But people don't get it. They miss on that understanding that if you want to fly, the things that draw you to acting, oh, I want to play and create characters and I want to tell stories and get into ensembles, synergistic experiences and share with someone else, if you even have that kind of insight, What's holding it so that it doesn't just look like a bunch of slop? You with me? Mm -hmm. You can throw a bunch of fish into a bowl, does it make it gumbo? You can throw a bunch of meat and vegetables into a pot, it doesn't make it a stew. You know? There's a diff there, there are things that make things what they are to the point where, you know, they actually have chili contests. And when you think about it, what is it? You know, it's either beef or turkey meat or it's vegan or, and it's got vegetables and spices and a base. It's, but if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> you got something we don't know what it tastes like. But boy, when you eat a chili, boom. Mm -hmm. So with acting, for you to soar, for you to be able to get let the spirit of yours sail and tell these stories and bring these characters to life and and have all these characteristics crystallizing and that whole thing. What's supporting it? Oh, well, actors don't need support. We just do it. That's why most actors don't work. Because you, you don't just do it. There has to be a processes there that you can work off of that gives you the confidence to be able to soar. And in this processes, we have some core foundational tenets that support it. And one of those foundational tenets to support what it is that we're doing is a quote from Viola Spolin, who said she was the grandmother of improvisation. She was a 20th century acting coach who developed a series of exercises to work with her actors that became known as theater games and got turned into improvisational exercises. And now we know them today as improv. That's where it came from. And in Vela Spolin's book, the name is, that it is the increasing of the capacity of the artist's ability to experience that determines their talent. Not your experiences, not necessarily you, but your ever increasing capacity to experience. So therefore, it's about learning to get past you and what you know and your standard of operations and your procedures and our neuroses that can become psychoses and all these rhythms and patterns and things that we do that become part of who it is that we are that prevent us from taking in more information. If you want to put more furniture into a house with a lot of furniture, you're either going to have to get rid of some furniture or make the house bigger. I mean, let's just deal with it here. Or somehow shrink the furniture. 
right? So it's the same thing with information. If you want information in you, you've got to get things out of the way. So often I spend the beginning part of uh, an advanced teaching just preparing people to learn. I think the last, the last master class I taught over at SAG after headquarters, mm -hmm. when they call me in to do these you know, big talks, were you the ones that were leaving? Right. Yeah, we met there. And, and I think I spend like the first 20, 30 minutes just talking about the learning process what it takes to learn things and how I know all of you in here right now, you're going, okay, here's this, here's this person that SAG brought in, SAG after brought in, who is he? What's he about? Do I like him? Do I want to hear what he has to say? Do I agree with him? Your judge is in the way right now. So I have to, I have to dismantle the judge. I have to get the panel of experts out of the way mm -hmm. so that you, each, you have a shot at hearing what I have to say. You know, that kind of thing. So when you're coming in from your life, it's like you've done your Friday. Everybody in here has done their Friday. Mm -hmm. right? You have things on your to-do list or if you work with a calendar or you know, whatever it might be that gets you and you start thinking, okay, well, i got to work until here on the Friday and I'm going to do this, I'll do this, I'll stop by here, I'll eat this, and then I'm going to go to my acting class. Mm -hmm. And then after my acting class, if we get out early enough, maybe we can go out and we do this. And then, <laughs> well, you're not going to get out early enough, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you, you see how we do that. I mean, that's just how we manage our lives. That's the survivalist. But at some point, you've got to pull the survivalist out. Get them out of the way so that the creative artist can come in and grow without all the clutter around.